Then we have the next question. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Abdul Shaku Akhe bin Mat Anwar. I have a question for you. Could you share your thought on how we can explain to the non-Muslim in an effective way and the Muslim on total devotion to Allah? Thank you. The student asked the question that how can we explain to a non-Muslim that there should be total devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First, we have to prove to the non-Muslims about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The different types of non-Muslim. Some, some non-Muslim believe in God. Some, some non-Muslim don't believe in God. First, we have to prove to them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator. And as I mentioned earlier in my talk, that Allah says in Surah Dariya, chapter number 50 and verse number 56, that we have been created not but to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator. He's our sustainer. And if you ask any human being, he will tell you that yes, we have to love our parents, we have to respect our parents. Why? Because they gave us life, they gave us all this niyama. In this context, if you compare our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has given everything that is there around us. When our parents take care of us, we respect them, we love them, and we thank them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all this niyama. That is the reason it is compulsory that we thank him. This body that Allah has given us, the health Allah has given us, the food Allah has given us, we have to thank him. And how many of us thank Allah for the niyama? And how many of us have, have ever thought that the air we breathe, the air, leave aside the other niyama, the air, if we don't get this air for a few minutes, we would die. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator who has given us all the niyama. Since he is the creator who has given us all these blessings, all these wonderful things, as a human being, it becomes our duty that we have to thank him. And there are various ways of thanking. In Islam, the word ibadah, comes from the root word abd. Worship means ibadah. Ibadah comes from the root word abd, meaning a slave. So worship, people think that worship means only salah. Yes, worship is one type of salah. One, uh, salah is one type of worship, which is a very high category. Giving zakat is worship, going for hajj is worship, but as a whole, any commandment you follow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is ibadah. Obedience to Allah is ibadah. If Allah says not to have alcohol and you don't have alcohol, you're doing ibadah. Allah says don't have pork and you don't have pork, you're doing ibadah. Allah says you have to be honest and you be honest, it's ibadah. Allah says don't tell lies and you don't tell lies, that is ibadah. Allah says, be good to your wife. If you're good to your wife, it's ibadah. So following the commandment of Almighty God is ibadah. And since I mentioned earlier that this life is the test for the hereafter. Allah says in Surah Mul, chapter number 16, verse number 2, Allazi khalaqal mawta wal hayata. It is he who has created the life and the death to test which of you is good in deeds. So this life that we are leading in this world is a test for the hereafter. And our textbook and the rules and regulation is given in the Quran. So if we follow these rules and regulation of the examination, in the next life, inshallah, we'll go to Jannah, we'll go to paradise. So it's the duty of every human being that he follows the commandment of the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we follow the commandment of the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are doing ibadah. And if we do this, inshallah, we'll benefit in this world as well as the akhirah. Hope that answers the question. Thank you.